Hi and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben and this is my review for Netflix's original movie Velvet Buzzsaw. This is how my reviews work. I give a short synopsis, then I talk about what I liked and did not before giving my rating in fact at the end. Let's jump into the review. Exactly. Velvet Basso is a cautionary tale at heart about what art is, how it can be subjective and how people around look at it differently through different lenses. Where someone sees the meaning of life, others see a picture of a horse. No different. So Velvet Bursaw is about an ambitious associate, Josefina, who she stumbles upon a trove of undiscovered paintings created by her recently deceased neighbour. He has no legal heirs, so she claims the work for herself. She partners with Rodora Hayes, played by uh, Rene Russo. She was a once famous punk rock musician who, who now has a legendary owner of a great avant-garde gallery. Together they try to capitalize on the dead man's work. But as Morth van der Feld, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, invests on these paintings more, he unearths uncomfortable truths that lead to some horrific discoveries, as you'll later find out. But I like. So this film is essentially a statement about the nature of art and how art is a dialogue from viewer to art piece. Or to put it more succinct, succinctly, as John Malkovich comments, it's about how the burden of living with art and commerce becomes quite onerous and maybe about the horrors of the art world. The way that the film shows this to us is through themes that it carries within, how the actors' characters interact with the art within the art world. One of those themes which I thought was an awesome way to look at it is just how much exactly an artist will put into their art of themselves, just how much of their spirit goes into each piece. I think the film reflects this through characters we get to see on screen and the cast in this film is excellent to portray that. Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo and John Malkovich are superb as in their roles, they're just great at what they do and they're really great in this film. But that's just the tip of the iceberg of the great cast that are in this film. I can't save you. Not only is this an interesting commentary on art and what it means to us, what it means to people, but it also has a horror thriller theme. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with this film. I thought that originally that this film could come across as pretentious, a movie about art, talking about art with art in it, but it's not that. There is a kind of 30 minute story at the beginning of the film where the movie puts you into the shoes of the art world what artists see, what kind of people they are surrounded with, what you get in this art world. And it's very backstabby. Everybody wants to get the best work and they'll do just about anything to get it, to show it, to own it. However, when the film takes a turn to the supernatural, I found the core theme shifted somewhat. It draws from films like, of which I was surprised by, Phantasm and Final Destination, maybe a little Ghostbusters. You know that, well, Ghostbusters too, you know that bit with the art piece and the bad guy in it? It draws from these themes, and these themes are intertwined into the film, all while still keeping the core arc of the story. The film also really spends time to develop some of the characters from the core story. Jack is amazing in this, his facial expressions, his mannerisms, all really believable to the character he's portraying. I don't actually think there was anybody that I didn't like in this film. I thought everybody brought their A-game when it comes to acting. Some of the film's camera shots are quite creative as well, especially when there is a horror element occurring. They are really well done. So although the movie does tick some of those horror movie tropes, that are reflected a lot in this type of genre, well in horror genre, I felt the way they did it was quite fresh. There was a point in the film where I started playing this game that I sometimes do with horror, and that game is who's going to die next. And that doesn't mean that it, I took away anything bad from the film, I just sometimes like to play that game, I try to guess who's going to die, and I found that I was enjoying the film, I had a lot of fun with it, and I think that sums up my experience with this film. I half expected it to be dull and pretentious, but none of that happened. I was really glad that it didn't go that way, it wasn't pretentious. What I did not like. There's not much I did not like about this film actually. Just one tiny thing that might be only my issue. I thought that the middle of the film dragged a bit. I felt like it ran slightly too long. There was a middle segment where I felt like, okay, I get what you're doing, I get where it's going, I get what you're trying to say, can we just get to the point? There was a little section there in the middle that I thought, okay, we could probably skip this bit, I get where it's going. 
But actually, I really enjoyed this entire film. I enjoyed my experience of this. Did you know? Did you know that unlike most films, this movie has six main protagonists? This was done on purpose to show the world of art in a centralized premise. So you have the curator, the gallery owner, the critique, and so on. Every major part of this world is a protagonist. It's partly why this film works as well as it does. You have segments of the stories to draw from from each part of well, from each protagonist. And as the story develops, you get to see what's happening with this art and why it's bad and why you shouldn't go there. And the story kind of draws itself to a close by pulling on all these threads as you see what's happening with each character. Right from the opening of this movie, I was intrigued as to what the plot was going to do. I was intrigued right into the end of the credits as well. Well, to, as the credits rolled, I was still watching. My eyes were still glued. I wanted to see what happens. I was still mem mesmerized. Critique is so limiting and emotionally draining. The horror elements of this film doesn't pull any punches either when it gets going. Some of the dialogue is really interesting and introspective. The acting is fantastic. The cinematography coupled with the camera angles are creative and it's just a visual feast as well for your eyes. I felt like this film was quite fresh and original and I think it should be celebrated for being just that. As such, I'm giving Velvet Buzzsaw an A. Thanks for watching my review of Velvet Buzzsaw. I have a number of other reviews headed your way, like Umbrella Academy, another Netflix series original. My review for that will be out next week, Friday, or maybe earlier. And my review for Nightfly should be out on Friday the 1st in the afternoon, which is tomorrow. So if you liked my review and found it informative and helpful, please hit that subscribe button and bell. And thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate each and every subscriber and comment and like. I love you guys just getting involved with, with my content. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch it. And remember, until next time, live long and Tuesday.